represent for all the working class. Welcome back to Campus Boss. I'm Kimberly Bremo. Today we're speaking with just certain very young and talented artists. One of my personal favorites, Talk of the Town. We love that you and I have been listening to it all morning. So he's here to tell us more about his career and where he'd like to go. All right, so welcome to Campus Boss. Um, give thanks, give thanks, Campus Boss. I'm, I'm well, um, I'm happy for this moment. I'm humbled, you know, just give thanks again. Thank you. All right, so I was reading your bio and I found out that you grew up in Uwatan. So tell me more about growing up there. What was it like at Charlie Mount High School and all that stuff? Uh, yes, I was born in um, Linstead, St. Ketchin. I was raised in Uwatan. Actually, I'm a past student at the Uwatan Primary school um, I attended the Charlemont um, actually did five years there and actually I actually did I extended two years at six form actually I'm a past um, football player Colts and the Costa Cup I played one year a Colts uh, played three years of the Costa Cup um, well growing up well actually in school you know I was in and out of school, not saying I was a bad person, but um, I did fairly well. Uh, fairly well, I did actually pass some CXCs, some K, but I could do be way better. But you know, when I grew up on thing, I look at boy thing they just a uh, freestyle, and you know. But at the end of the day, I'm still here, pushing, you know, going forward with my life and all of that still. So. All right, you said look at boy a freestyle and thing. So tell me more about when you decided to become an artist and what inspired you to take this route. Uh, well, actually, I've been singing from a tender age, you know. Actually, um, my cousin always tell me that um, I have a girl cousin by the name Avia. She's in um, Utah, USA right now. Um, she was the one actually always telling me that I can sing. But, you know, growing up at the time, I didn't realize what she was actually saying about singing. Like, she was saying, you can sing, and, you know, that was the case. So, um, I was in high school at, I think it was 1999, yeah. I had a couple of brothers, you know, um, Shanti Rebler, um, Juggler, you know Juggler, yeah, he's a past um, representative of the Magnum Kings and Queen, yeah, yeah, so we were actually at school and, you know, we normally at school just uh, not decks and, you know, it's a whole vibe and from there, so I just actually, you know, found the love, you know, I found the love where, you know, I normally freestyle, because I'm good at freestyle, like, that was a part of me, actually, and then, you know, 2000, I started writing. It was the first time I actually, you know, attempted to write a song. You know, actually, I made mean, my cousin listen to the song and he was like laughing, like super laughing, like, yo, what is this? This doesn't make no sense. And, you know, but at the time, you know, me had the type of youth where always, you know, I didn't really give up that easily. Yeah, I'm always confident and persistent in whatever I do. So, yeah, definitely. All right, so tell me about the first time you go in studio now. You tell me about the first time you write the song and you have somebody read it over to hear your lyrics and that support. When was the first time you went into the studio to now record? Ah, uh, it was 2003. Yeah, that was in Builders, um, that's in Chartwood, Lady Huggins. Uh, I did a song by the name um, Father Figure. Yeah, that was the first experience. You know, I was excited. You know, I went home after I, I recorded the song and I played, this, I played this song like for a week straight. Like, repeat, repeat, repeat and you know, it was excited. I was excited about the whole thing and you know, from then, you know, I started doing my own stuff from there, you know, started going to the studio when I have the time and all of that. All right, so tell me more about your inspiration. Who are the artists that you look up to? You know, people say our music is lost um, with all that's going on, the negativity, but what keeps you inspired? Who are those persons that you emulate or that you see as good figures in the music industry? Whoa, whoa, that's a big question. Um, well, actually, you know, um, Sizzler, you know, Bojo Bantan, Assassin, you know, just to name a few. Um, the new acts now, like Chronix um, and, you know, the new artists, even Ayano Ayanti, my own brother, see me, because we grew up together and him, him good like that too. So, you know, we keep me going to, you know, the competition, they'll be team and him, we just, you know, every artist that do a thing and, uh, you know, push yourself and things. So, definitely, and, you know, even um, Bob them themselves, Bob Marley and Peter Touch and them great, you know, definitely. I remember reading about a song with you and Ayana Ayante, a song um, dedicated to our athletes. So tell me more about that collaboration. Ah, the collab now. I think it was in 2008 after the Beijing Olympics, right? Uh, I was just home. You know, me, a lot of artists, I do stuff. 
music and so they must sing about the athletes and you know. I got a rhythm and I was, you know, I was there thinking about like, you know, I can do something like this stuff, you know, because, you know, I have the talent there. So um, I was there listening to the track, which is the rhythm, and, you know, I came up with the, the hook and the whole thing, and then um, actually I linked Ayano Ayante, you know, went to the studio and recorded it, and, you know, we actually get a few airplay on it, as in, you know, locally, we never get that push, pertinent in it, pertinent to the whole. Push the, and the athletes, J athletes, and you know from there, you know it was a, it was a good look, it was a good look. Trust me, cause I something like that where that is history. Mm -hmm. we, we bolt and all of the athletes did history. We can't wipe it off, no matter what we do. We can't get rid of that. So it was an honor for me to actually come up with a thing like that. Me, I know Ayanti, come up with a thing like that and create such nice, happy feeling, you know, about our own athletes. I just mentioned the music industry. Uh, it's normally hard for you to break in and to, you know, find your own niche. What has been the hardest thing for you to develop in the music industry? What is the what is you find is the is the major conflict, you know, to break out? Wow, 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 wow. Well, as an aspiring artist, it's very, very, very difficult. Trust me. Um, getting your place is one. You know, having a team that really believes in the talent is another issue, you know. You know, upcoming people don't really have to invest in you like that, you know. People, you know, when, when them see a thing happen, people jump on, which we don't mind still, but as a young artist, you know, when you see a talent, you can't invest before the thing launch off big, you see me? Because, like, you give you more strength for even believing in you, believing in us, you know. So we need people where that really is the talent before it, before it reaches the heights, you know, and nurture it and, and, you know, and, and let the artist feel, you know, feel, the artist feel, you know, at home, definitely. So uh, what are upcoming things for, for you? Well, um, actually I should be leaving Jamaica um, either ending of May or early June. Actually, I'm going to do some promotion over there. Um, actually, I'm working with this, um, this lady right now, Linda Arlett. She's actually managing my career right now. Um, she has her enterprise, um, LA Diamond Enterprises Incorporation. Yeah. And she lives in New York. Actually, she, I met her, you know, somewhere, somehow. And, you know, from there, she was like, just certain. You're good, you know. And, you know, she was one of the persons who actually, like, you know, believed more in me. You know, a big and I must say a big thank you to the fans them. Um, they, I don't want to stray from the whole thing, but I big up the fans them. But they're there for me from day one. We just they're there and nurture me and push me. You know, even when it's my time, I feel like I can't bother with it. Cause it's my time. The journey get tough. You know, but as I say, give thanks to Linda Arlett. You know, she's actually managing my career right now. Um, so I must say a big thank you to she right now, definitely. All right. So um, I want to be a little bit futuristic. What can the fans expect from you, from just certain, in the next 10, 10 or so years? Well, it's a futuristic, right? All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be re realistic right now. If I'm living and I'm healthy, definitely the fans can look out for great music from just certain music that will inspire the younger generation, the older generation, anybody at all. I'm going to try to keep my music well-rounded, so baby, you know, all the folks, church people, Rastafarians, everybody can relate to my music, basically. Yeah. So what do you think has been your greatest achievement to date in the music industry or overall? Well, my greatest achievement, you know, is actually, you know, seeing the growth where I'm coming from, like literally, you know, getting right up in the star, you know, being featured on TV, internationally locally you know and you know even doing shows overseas too so those are things that we can look towards and say yo yeah may I, may I make moves you know may I grow you know i'm doing it i'm, I'm in it to win it definitely growth is important and once you acknowledge and you can see growth that is very good
<laughs> all right so you don't know that campus bus can't go on without a random pick question right so i'm gonna ask you to choose a question that you're gonna answer for us i don't know what it is either <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, this question um, is, if you were chosen to act in a cartoon, which character would you be and why? Whoa. <laughs> well, um, we're not definitely working with Papa, you know. Because <laughs> Papa, why well, am I working with Papa still? Because you know? so Papa, you know, you know what I think, I think of spinach. So I'm telling spinach, eh? Strength, you know, weak, you know, it's fine energy if you just move anything in the world. So, definitely, I'm mean, gonna work with Popeye still. Eh? Reason being, you know, Popeye always uh, overcome. Yeah, so definitely. And that is like an example of just certain, just certain ever overcomes things. Definitely. Oh, yeah, man. Alright, so tell the fans where they can find you, they can get the music, them something, the, the Instagram, the Facebook, everywhere. Ah, uh, well, management, Linda Arlett, LA Diamond Enterprises. Um, our contact number is 347-246-9945. That's in New York, right? Um, well, you know, we're in the technology age right now, so everybody have a Facebook account. Most people, well, majority of the world have a Facebook account. You know, so definitely you can check me out on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Yeah, definitely. And how we find those pages, what are, you know, the uh, at, yes. at, at stuff? I must say, you know, you can look for just certain. That's spelled J A H C E R T A I N. Definitely. So everything is just just certain. So Facebook, Instagram. All right. So fans, if you want to check out just certain? Just look J A H C E R T A I N, and that's on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can check out his stuff. And I must say, check out the talk of the tone. Bad, 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 bad piece of song. <laughs> All right. Um, so this was. Campus Boss, I'm Kimberly. Thank you so much for stopping and sharing with us. It was truly enlightening. I like to see when the youth are passionate about their talents and them push forward no matter what me like them someday. So, you know, you being here is just an inspiration for me. Yes, I'm, I'm humbled. You know, I'm, I'm elated. I must say a big thank you to Campus Boss. You know, it's definitely an honor for me. And, you know, we just want the people just look out for just certain because just certain have a lot input in the reggae music internationally locally you know you know so i want love you know rest of our eye, you know just said he's going to take us out thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again soon all right take it away campus bus you don't know just said i represent i just say have a seat first i'm gonna ask the first you know first you see me you're gonna talk on the tone talk on the tone Talk on the tone, boom. Little did they ever knew, yeah. Eh, eh, love was never true. Boom, you see she had the talk on the tone, talk on the tone. Everywhere she goes, she just a bounce man around. She had the talk on the tone, talk on the tone. Miss confusion and deception out of road. Wealthy men and rich men constantly inconsistent. Even though she know with them and the dollars where she in them, the Euro, Canadian, US and Sterling and the table she want turning. Matter who get burning as long as it concerning. Yes, I daily earning. She twist it, she turn it and have the men emerging from who she converted, from who get diverted. And later on they found it was really worth it, yeah. Little did they ever knew, yeah. Hey, hey, love was never true. But you said that she had the talk of the tone, talk of the tone. You yeah, don't know, just saying I represent campus bus, you know. Give thanks, you know. One love, Rastafari. Blessed. <laughs>